uh, in addition to uh, deciding the space allocation, uh, deciding where these departments are going to be placed, the workstations, and so on. Uh, once those decisions are made, then on, on when you're trying to make those decisions, you also have to account for the material handling that you're going to be using, the equipment that you're going to be using for moving these parts or these products to uh, one department, from one department to another department, and so on. Also, from if you look at the problem from a warehouse perspective, how are you going to uh, store the products and how are you going to move those products around? So, um, it, as part of our discussion in our previous lectures, we, we, we talk about the importance of material handling. So, if you, for example, um, are going to be moving uh, things very often, um, then having a single a person doing that type of job uh, maybe not the best option so you would like to have some type of equipment automatic equipment that can help you move those materials from point a to point b um, and, and that has to be included as part of the economic assessment that you are making for the design of your facility so today we're going to talk about this uh, different type of equipment that you is available for you when you're making these decisions and what are the advantages and disadvantages of using those type of equipment. Um, so, so this refers to the first objective. Um, so we, we are uh, developing an understanding and in this case on the material handling systems and how it's that connected to the practice of designing facilities. Uh, so again, our discussion today is going to be focusing on, on this equipment. Um, and we're going to learn about some of the material handling equipment requirements into a facility. So let's start with uh, looking at the, the hierarchy of facility planning. And this is a figure that I show you in the first uh, lecture. And we, we have so far We've been looking at this area of, of facilities planning on the design, uh, from the design perspective, uh, basically designing the interior of the, of the facility. Uh, we look at things such as structural design, which was part of the, uh, of the lectures, lecture six. Layout design, those were covered at the beginning of the semester. And now you're looking at the handling system design, so interior handling. Uh, we are also, after the second exam, we're gonna look at other um, problems that are also connected to this material handling equipment uh, decision process. We're gonna be focusing on conveyors specifically, and there's gonna be some uh, math uh, involved in terms of making those decisions. But for now, we're gonna be focusing on, on the description. Um, and then after we, we look at the conveyors design, we are going to transition to facility location. So these type of problems are more um, are, are designed to make decisions such as where you will place your next facility based on the demand of uh, XYZ product, uh, and also based on the location of other facilities that are part of your, of your company. So we're going to look at that also as part of the, the discussion, but that will come after the second exam. So going back to material handling, uh, the components of material handling, uh, that those are the materials. So these are the products, the items uh, that you are going to move through the facility, right? So this could be people also that are being moved, transport, or physically relocated within the facility. The move, and this is, origin, travel path, destination, and frequency to be made. Basically, what is, what is the purpose, right? So are you gonna be putting this product back to a shelf or are you gonna be moving this to another process? Or are you gonna be moving this to the warehouse? So those are uh, connected to this second, second aspect, the move. And then the method, these are the equipment, people, procedures, physical facilities to be used to make the move. Okay, so these are the three components. First, you need to know what you're going to be moving. So these are the materials and involve many, many things. The move uh, to be made. So where are you going to take this uh, material and also the method? What type of equipment or are you going to be using a person, staff to, to move these materials? 
So this is the, what I call the material handling equation in which you are trying to use these uh, questions to design or to decide what type of material handling equipment you're gonna use. So we start with the why, why do you need to move uh, these materials? Uh, what are you gonna be moving? What type of material, where and when? That's part of the move. And how and who is the mecca? So if you answer these questions, then you will make a decision in terms of the, the equipment that you're gonna be using. Uh, so here's information about the, the taxonomy of material handling. And this is uh, by the College Industry Council on Material Handling Education. So these are the, the classifications of the transport equipment within material handling. So we have conveyors, we have cranes, uh, industrial trucks, or no equipment, right? And then you have... Uh, positioning equipment, unit load formation equipment, storage equipment, and uh, identification and, and control. So we're gonna be looking at the, each of these categories individually, and then I'm going to uh, provide you some information in terms of when, what are the advantages, when to use this type of equipment, and so on. Um, so material handling equipment, is used for the movement and storage of material within the facility or a site. So we already mentioned that. And material handling equipment can be classified into the following five major categories. So we'll start with transport equipment. This is used to move material from one location to, the, to another location. So for example, between work uh, places, between uh, a loading dock and a storage area for warehouses uh, and so on. And the major subcategories of transport equipment are these four. We have the conveyors, the cranes, the industrial trucks, and also uh, no equipment, right? So this uh, material can be moved by, by a person uh, by no use of any other type of equipment. So that's also an option. So conveyors, cranes, industrial trucks, in, for example, forklifts, those are examples. Uh, a material can also be transported without the need of any equipment. So number two are the positioning equipment. This is used to handle material at a single location. So that is in the current position for subsequent handling, machining, transport, or storage. So basically, this is the type of material handling equipment that you're gonna, instead of moving the, the material or the product, you wanna keep it in the right place in the same location without movement so you can perform other activities on those on that material. Unlike transport equipment, positioning equipment is usually used for handling is at a single workplace. Um, and as we did for the transportation equipment, you can also, uh, position this manually without the need of any equipment. That's also an option. Uh, the unit low formation equipment, this is to restrict materials so that they maintain the integrity when handled as a single load during transport and for storage. So you can think about a pallet of products with multiple boxes on top of the pallet. So you're putting them together so you can move that pallet as a single unit. Those are type of, of material handling equipment for the unit load formation. So if materials are self-restrained, for example, a single part or interlocking parts, then they can be formed into a single load with no equipment. So that's also an option. So as you can see for all these categories, there's also the option of not using any, any type of equipment. Um, storage equipment, this is equipment used for holding or buffering materials over a period of time. Um, so uh, the racks that you will use to store uh, boxes. Uh, some storage equipment may include the transport of materials. So for example, um, these storage carousels, those are pretty common in warehouses. Uh, if materials are block stacked, 
directly on the floor, then no storage equipment is required. So if you're just basically putting them one on top of the other on the floor, there's no need for any other equipment. And then there's identification and control equipment. This is equipment used to collect and communicate the information that is used to coordinate the flow of materials within the facility um, and between the facility and its suppliers and customers. So RFID technology, for example, the use of these tags and, and then each product will have a tag. You have these uh, scanners that will scan the information of the product and then we'll keep real time information about the, the products that are being moved. Um, the identification of materials and associated control can be performed manually without the use of specialized equipment. So as we did for the other four, always the option of not having any equipment. So those are the, the five categories. Going back here, we have transport equipment, positioning equipment, unit load formation equipment, storage equipment, and identification and control equipment. Within each one of these categories, we're gonna have subcategories and we're gonna go deeper in this discussion. So let's start with the transport equipment. The major subcategories of transport equipment are these four conveyors, cranes, industrial trucks, or not equipment, no equipment. So for the conveyors, this is equipment to be moved, um, materials over a fixed path between specific points. So if you think about a conveyor, if you have, I've, been, I've never visited a, a manufacturing plant. You can think about uh, going to the supermarket and when there was uh, people helping you to uh, pack your stuff and, and cash, um, you will have these conveyors, you put your stuff there and they will move the, the supplies to the person, the cashier, right? So that's the type of equipment we are referring to. Uh, so you're moving your materials from point A to point B and you have a fixed path, right? This path is not changing and you're using these belts that are moving uh, because they're rolling. So you're gonna put them on top of the, of the belts and they're gonna move the equipment or the materials to the, the location or the end location. Then we have the cranes. This is equipment used to move material over variable paths. So that's the main difference between this one and the conveyors. Uh, conveyors have a fixed path. These cranes, you have the flexibility. Obviously you have a limited range. So it's not like you're gonna cover a long range, but within the range of the crane, you, can, you have the flexibility of moving the, the materials. Um, industrial trucks also are used to move materials over a variable path. So with these trucks, you have more uh, range. You can cover more range with no restriction on the area covered by the movement. So for example, if you have to go from one department to a department across the facility and you have enough space, aisle space for, for the truck, you can do that. Uh, there's no limitation in terms of the area covered or no equipment, as we have mentioned already. So you can have a staff member moving the, the parts from point A to point B. Um, so conveyors, trains, industrial trucks. And on the next slide, I have a figure uh, that I think is, is very simple, but also gives you the, the understanding of when to use each type of equipment from these uh, subcategories. So here you go. So you see you have the main three subcategories. You have the cranes, the industrial trucks, and the conveyors. Uh, so as I mentioned, for the cranes, you have a limited space area that you can cover, right? So if you have the crane located here at the, in the middle, the crane will be able to, uh, you have some variable path, right? You can move the product within this area, but you cannot move, I mean, again, you have a limited, range, so it will be, you will be able to move materials or products within this range, in this blue area. Uh, for conveyors, you have a fixed path, and that's illustrated with this red line. So you can move products uh, from this point to this point using that belt or that conveyor, but if you need to move outside that line, 
is not possible. So again, if you have a high volume of products that need to take that path, the conveyor will be an option. But if you need more flexibility, you can use a crane, but if you have to have even more flexibility in terms of moving outside that area, that range, then the industrial trucks will give you the, uh, the highest range. Um, battle pad plus the unrestricted area movement. But again, you, you can only use this truck for specific movement. Like if you're gonna move only a single product, then it'll be not a good decision to use a truck just to move a single unit every time, right? So depending on the type of, of process that you're trying to design for, you have to look at the advantages and disadvantages of these equipment and then decide what will be the best option for you. In cranes, you have flexibility within this range. Industrial truck, you have more space you can cover. The conveyors give you a fixed path. Um, so on the next slide, I'll, I'll guide you through these um, advantages and disadvantages. So for example, uh, conveyors are used when material is to be moved frequently between specific points. So again, if you're moving a lot of parts from this point to this point, then using a conveyor makes sense because you will have that direct path uh, of movement and you, you can have that um, continuously and you're moving a lot of, of materials. To move materials over a fixed path and where there is a sufficient volume to justify the fixed conveyor investment. So you have to have certain volume of, of material movement in order to justify the use of a conveyor. Of a conveyor. Um, because remember, this is gonna be fixed, right? So if you, if you really need to have a conveyor is because you have a high volume of parts that needs to be moved within that fixed path. Um, conveyors can be classified in different ways depending on the type of product being handled, unit load or bulk load. So for unit load, um, for example, you can have a, a conveyor that is just moving a single part. You have like a space limitation for that part, uh, or you can have a space for moving multiple parts at the same time. The location of the conveyor and whether or not loads can be accumulated on the conveyor. So can you keep, some of the materials on the conveyor as it moves. So here's a long list of different type of conveyors. I have some pictures about them. You can look at them. Obviously my, my objective is not for you to memorize this list. That's not the, the goal. Or from my perspective uh, and from, from your perspective as well, the idea is that you, you look at this list you, look, you can correlate that name to, to uh, a, an equipment shape, right? And, and you're familiarized with the different type of equipment that is available. Um, so long list, I'm not gonna read through this, uh, but we're gonna show you some, some um, pictures about the different types of conveyors. Uh, so this is the shoot conveyor. Um, so basically this works with the gravity. So you, this will be common on, on areas, warehouses, for example, in, in UPS, uh, where the packages arrive and you have to separate them so they can be uh, located in the right truck. So you will have a, a kind of conveyor separating the packages and then they will go through these shoot conveyor and get to the area of the, of the truck that will handle that package. Uh, wheel conveyors, these are common um, I have worked with this um, type of conveyors. Like for example, if you are working in a store and you have to uh, get some of the, the product that you're selling in the store, this will be uh, common there. So you can move the boxes and you can easily uh, put this uh, in a storage location without occupying a lot of space. Um, also, if you look at the food banks, when you're, when you're receiving donations, sometimes you don't know how many or how many boxes you're gonna get. Uh, so you, you have these wheel conveyors available so you can uh, deliver or bring those into the warehouse from the truck. Um, transport equipment, uh, the gravity loader conveyor. Again, the same idea, right? You have this fixed path 
there's different technology being used so to facilitate the movement. Uh, so these are gravity uh, rudder conveyors, the chain conveyor, uh, the lift power rudder conveyor. So this has a, an engine or a motor that is moving the the uh, the conveyor. Um, slack conveyor. Again, this is separating. So you move the materials and depending where they need to be sent, you can uh, use that uh, flexibility and separate the, the loads. Uh, the magnetic belt conveyor. So you see this is uh, for a specific type of material, the same metal. If you need to uh, separate uh, the, the material from other type of, of material, you can use these magnetic conveyors and only the the metal is going to start into into the conveyor and the rest of the of the material will, will stay uh, down uh, flat belt conveyor uh, for the vibrating conveyor this is more for food processing so you can separate the, the product and you can um, package those in this case fries uh, same thing here, bucket conveyor. So you're you're lifting material and then putting them in, in a specific area or, or storage location. Um, the loop phase pneumatic conveyor, uh, this is a silo. So again, you have this rotary airlock that is helping you move the materials, uh, screw conveyor, same ideas. They have this, this inside and as, as it rotates, some of the material will go up. Um, and this is another type of conveyor. Uh, this is, I mean, if you go to a bank service with, with a car, car bank service, you will see this type of pneumatic conveyors, which you have this capsule, you put the, the papers inside and it will put it to, to the location. Um, vertical lift conveyors, other type of configurations, same idea, fix, uh, fixed path. Now in this one, you have somehow an, an elevator, right? So once you get to this point, that will move the, the boxes up and then it will continue. Uh, same thing here, same of type of, of, of material handle equipment in which you have this elevator moving the boxes up. Um, these are uh, trolley conveyors. Uh, this goes back to the, the type of, of space or the type of unit movement that you're going to have. So in this case, for the trolley conveyors, you're moving a, a single unit at a time, or you have multiple trolleys that are uh, moving through this rail, and then you can place these items into the trolley conveyor and it will continue uh, their movement. Um, Power free and free conveyors. These are uh, so you can move them with, I mean, push them, uh, pull them as you need to. But again, you have the, the same uh, configuration. You have these trolleys and they're attached to these uh, bars at the top. Um, uh, this, again, it's, it's a combination. Of, of different type of conveyors. So this is called a sortation conveyor. This again, uh, something that you will find uh, if you work for UPS or FedEx and you are in these warehouses where they do the split of the packages for delivery. Uh, so they will come, this will come from their uh, major facility. They will bring them here. They will scan, I mean, automatically they will have some scanners like the ones you see here. So they, they're coming from different places, different trucks. They'll come to the same line. They're scanned and they're, they're split it according to the delivery truck that is going to make the final uh, delivery. Uh, so these are some of the options for uh, splitting. Uh, there's some, some more here, uh, sortation conveyors with the tilting device. Um, and sortation conveyor which cross the for device. Um, so here's you again, you have the materials coming in, you're moving in this direction and depending on where they need to go, they will be separated here in this, this part. Okay, so that's for the conveyors.
any any questions, comments, anything from, from you guys? Uh, so again, these are different type of conveyors depending on what type of, of methodology or what type of process you are designing for, uh, what type of movement you need to do, what type of material you're moving. These are some of the options that you, you have uh, for making that uh, decision. Also, if you go to a facility that is already in place, then knowing about the how this equipment works will help you understand how the, the process works in the in the facility. Um, so now let's let's talk about the cranes. Um, so this is the second type of equipment, zero handed equipment that we listed. And the general characteristics of cranes are the following. Uh, they are used to move loads over a variable horizontal and vertical path within a restricted area. So again, you have this space, this range that you can you can cover with the cranes. Um, they're used when there is a insufficient or intermittent flow volume such that the use of a conveyor cannot be justified. So if you don't have this high volume, like the one that we need for a conveyor, then a crane would be a, an option. But you still have the, the equipment to move the materials within this range, uh, and you have that flexibility in terms of movement. So it provides more flexibility in movement than conveyors, provide less flexibility in movement than the industrial trucks, because the industrial trucks can cover a, major, a larger range. Um, loads handle are more varied with respect to their shape and weight than those handled by a conveyor. So again, for a conveyor, you have a limited space, uh, the space of the belt, and that's the limitation. You can only put products that are, are fit uh, can fit into that area. With the crane dust, you don't have that limitation. You can also uh, handle different type of, of shape and, and weight. Uh, more, most cranes utilize hoists for vertical movement, although manipulators can be used if precise positioning of the load is required. So let's look at um, the ma major type of cranes. Here are the top four, uh, the jib crane, the bridge crane, the entry crane, and the stagger crane. Okay, so when we talk about a crane, this is what we are referring to. Here's a, here's a picture. You have uh, this equipment, typically positioned in the middle of the area that you want to cover. And then you have this um, area right here in which this uh, belt is gonna hang or some type of, of, of equipment that is gonna allow you to grab the, the material that you need to move. And then according to the movement, right? So once you have the material uh, already in place, you can proceed to move that in within the area or the space. Uh, you have these uh, horizontal movement and you also have this vertical movement. So that's what gives you some flexibility in terms of positioning these uh, materials. Uh, so transport equipment, so again, the idea, there's different type of configurations. Um, there's uh, different type of applications. So here's the, the typical, like the one that I just show you here, uh, the jeep crane. So you have this column, you have the vertical movement, top, to bottom and also the horizontal movement. And then this, you have a range of space that you can cover. Um, the stagger crane, here you are, you have a, a space for the operator. So you're not necessarily moving material, but you're moving also the operator to place the, the, the materials in the right location. And the bridge crane, kind of similar, right? Now you have more, uh, space that you can cover in this horizontal space, right? So you have these two um, areas that are, um, these two beams that are allowing you to move from um, this location to this location. And then you also have only this limited space to move uh, from this direction. Another type of equipment, uh, for cranes, 
this ones, you can see these are fixed into the floor. So you only have the flexibility of moving that uh, within that space. Uh, this one has wheels. So it gives you even more flexibility in terms of the area uh, that you, you can cover. Uh, and this has only one column. Um, so again, very similar to the ones that we show. Okay, so any questions about the cranes and the conveyors? Again, my, my idea for you to understand the difference of when to use these equipment and also are that you're familiar with the different type of, of, of equipment that are within each category. Uh, so for the industrial trucks, here we have a lot of, of um, different equipment. Uh, these are used to move materials over variable horizontal paths with no restrictions on the area covered. So you have an unrestricted area. Uh, provide vertical movement if the truck has a lifting capability. So like the port trucks, um, sorry, the forklift trucks, those will have this vertical capability as well. So once you lift the material, you can move that vertically or you can also lift and move that up. Use where there is insufficient or intermittent flow volume such that the use of the conveyor cannot be justified. Same thing for the cranes. Provide more flexibility in movement than conveyors and cranes because it covered a larger space. Um, and they are not licensed to travel on public roads. Commercial trucks are licensed to travel on public roads. So there's the difference. So here's the list of the different industrial trucks. Um, so again, a long list. We are uh, not requesting you to memorize this list, but at least have an idea of how these um, are different and when to use each type of equipment. Uh, so these are the basic ones. Uh, if you go to, I mean, you might be familiar with this. They're, they're typical everywhere. Like if you have moved at some point from one apartment to another apartment, you might uh, use one of these. Um, these are common in, in these uh, stores like Sands and Costco. You, you need to uh, move a lot of boxes. And these are typical um, in, in the industry. These provide some type of protection for the materials that you're moving. Um, industrial trucks. So you have the manual pallet jack. So if you need to move these pallets, you can do that using this type of equipment. Uh, and the manual walking starter, this, um, this allows you to move the pallet horizontally. There's no capability to move vertically. Uh, but if you have this uh, manual walking stacker, you, you can, I mean, basically what's happening here is that you have that more flexibility to move uh, vertically. Uh, you have the power walking stacker. So here you don't have to walk. You have an engine and the car will move. Uh, and also the power pallet jack. You, it will not require you to use your own uh, force to uh, lift or to uh, move the, the material. Whereas in this one, you will have to perform most of the, of the force to, to lift it and also to pull the, the materials. Um, and then you have this um, sit down counterbalance lift trucks. Um, these are again, engine, uh, they have an engine, so they move. Uh, you don't have to, you only have to drive them. Uh, and there's differences between them. Uh, this one right here, uh, have a flexibility of moving up and down, but you might not have the flexibility to turn that uh, fork. This one gives you the flexibility of moving the fork. So uh, that's important if you have limited space. Uh, this one right here has very good uh, range in terms of moving vertically, same thing here. Uh, so these are good for narrow aisles. So if you need, you have very restricted space and you need to move boxes and up and down and then around the area, it will give, it will, will give you some additional flexibility. Um, AGV stands for Automated Guided Vehicles. Uh, so this is something that is becoming more common like um, warehouses, Amazon and so on. 
So you don't have a person, necessarily a person moving the, the materials. You will have these vehicles guiding the, the movement. Um, so here you have a towel uh, AGV, um, assembly AGV, same, same idea. You have this uh, vehicle that is moving the material for you. And here's the unit low AGV. So they, they, they move the material, they follow a specific path. So you can see the path in the, uh, in the floor. So these lines are the ones telling the vehicle uh, where they need to move uh, and so on. Um, and then power industrial trucks. These trucks are used for moving either mixed or uniform loads. Um, again, over various paths. Well, these paths can be somewhat random at the discretion of the driver. The paths are restricted to suitable indoor or outdoor uh, surfaces. Uh, so industrial trucks provide not only a means of transportation or transporting materials, but also provide a means uh, for accurate lifting and stacking. Um, appropriate tooling for the truck permits user to lift not only pallets, but the way array of specialized loads. So most of the time we are, we are familiar with this fork that is used to move pallets up and down, but that's not the only option that you have for these trucks. There's only type of specialized tools that you can put into these trucks and it, they will allow you to move other type of materials. For example, the rolls of carpet, these are easily moved via an industrial truck by replacing the standard fork with a single tube. Uh, these trucks can be found in almost any manufacturing plant, loading, dock, and warehouses. Uh, internal combustion trucks are at the advantage of outdoor use. They can lift between 2,000 and 50,000 pounds with some specialty trucks lifting up to 50 tons. And they can lift up to 20 feet in height and can operate on gasoline, LP gas, or diesel fuel. So there are diff seven different classes for uh, industrial trucks based on the Industrial Truck Association. And they're listed here. Each of these classes are divided into lift codes. And we're gonna show you some, some pictures about them in a minute. So you see the electric motor rider trucks, they're in a separate class. Narrow aisle trucks are a separate class. Hand trucks are a separate class, and, and so on. The first five classes are the most common. So internal combustion engine trucks, internal combustion engine trucks. You can see here class four and five are different in terms of the tires they use. Um, so electric motor ride, Rider trucks are generally purpose trucks, are used primarily indoors. And these trucks can lift up to six tons and up to 18 feet in height. Uh, for the narrow aisle trucks, these are again using narrow aisle applications. These are used primarily for storage retrieval in applications similar to the ASRS functions. And they can easily lift from 2,000 to 4,500 pounds of weight um, up to 40 feet. The hand trucks, electric motors, hand trucks are generally used for indoor applications. It can handle, handle up, up to four tons. Uh, these trucks are perfect for situations in which material is to be moved from one location to another without the need for lifting more than a few inches. So again, that has the limitation of the lifting capability. So for example, this type of truck is commonly used in grocery stores to move pallet loads of cans or boxes to display location within the store. So again, if you don't need a lot of movement in this vertical direction, these electrical motor hand trucks will be an option. Another convenience is that the operator can move from customers in the store safely and without obstructive use. Uh, internal combustion trucks have the advantage of outdoor use. They can lift up to 15,000 pounds with some special trucks able to lift up to 50 tons. Um, 
up to 20 feet in height and can operate on gasoline, internal combustion trucks are the advantage of outdoor use. So here's our, these classes and the different lift codes associated with each class. Again, you don't have to memorize this, just giving you this uh, specific information so you're familiar with it. So there's different lift code for each different class of truck. So we have the class number two, electric motor narrow aisles. We have lift code one, high lift, straddle, lift code two, order picker, and so on. Um, here we have the uh, eight lift codes. For class four, you only have lift code three, four counterbalance, cushion tire. Class five, lift code four, four counterbalance, pneumatic tire. Class six, lift code one, sit down rider. And Class seven also lift one. And here's some of the of the examples, um, different pictures for different classes. Uh, so for class one, this is the electric motor rider. Class one, um, difference, uh, the difference between this one and this one is the lift code. So this is lift code one. This is lift code number two. Um, Lift go numbers five for also electric motor rider. So you can, if you go back to this list, you can see the different um, type of equipment according to, to the lift code. Uh, also for class two, here's for electric motors. You can see the different type of, of configurations according to the lift code. Same thing here for class three electric motors. Um, class three also for electric motors. So we have all, all these different configurations in, type of, in terms of equipment. Yes, sir. So like I know whenever you see people operating these trucks, you typically see people, you have a spotter and then uh, an operator. Mm -hmm. Is there a way for this owner to spotter? And still would like have the same amount of safety? That's a that's a good question. And um the answer I will say is depending on the amount of flow that you have within the facility. Like if you have a lot of movement, like for example, if you go to a warehouse here in, in San Marcos for HEV, they they have a lot of trucks moving simultaneously at the same time. Um and I actually don't see a lot of people just doing the spotting, like looking at making sure that they, so I think from, from their perspective, they have uh, enough space in the aisles so they can all, if they're going in one direction, they can, they can go in the one side of the aisle. If they're coming in the other direction, uh, they have, uh, uh, they're moving in the other side of the aisle. Um, but to answer your question, it will depend on, on the amount of flow that you're seeing in the facility and also the space that you have for, for handling. If you, if you don't have enough space and you have a lot of flow, you have to make sure that there's no, no crashing happening in the, in the facility. Um, I think in one of the slides, I also mentioned that there's some equipment that have better visibility also. So, it will depend also on the and the equipment that you end up choosing for your facility. If you're putting that, yes, true, same. So if you have a, a lot of flow, you know that you're gonna have a lot of truck moving simultaneously, then you have to choose those trucks that are going to have better visibility, provide good training for, for the drivers as well. And, and have some some type of rule if you have enough space for the flow. Like if you you like you were driving a car in, in the highway, you have these rules that you have to follow in order to make sure that uh, the there's no crash happening within the facility. Uh, so that's that's a good question. Any any other question? Yes. Uh, can you go back like two slides? Are some of the trucks they carry for the one? Do those do those move? I don't think. Uh, that's a good question. So 
So you can see here, there's a wheel that is used for controlling the, the movement of the equipment. So even though if you don't see the wheels here, they, they have some capability of movement around. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, yeah, some, uh, there's other type of equipment, not, not this one, um, that will also be attached to um, like a rail some, some of the time, but that will be a different type of equipment. It's not uh, the trucks. I don't want you to get confused. Yes, but you can see here the wheel and that's what will be used to control the, the movement uh, of, the, of, the, of the equipment. Yes, and here are the heavy uh, equipment. I will say this will have uh, outdoor capability. You can see the wheels. Um, these are used typically in, uh, for example, if you uh, look at the power uh, companies, they will have these type of trucks to, to be able to move up and down their operators and, and to move the equipment also. Um, I have never seen one of this. Uh, that's pretty uncommon. Uh, this no, looks more. The airport. Oh, that's true. So this will be used to move the, the luggage within the, the airport. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, so, but what I'll say, like outside the airport, you might not see them. In, in industry quite often. Um, but these are common um, in, in different environments. Um, and then we get to the positioning equipment. Um, let's go through this. And then I'll, I'll, once we get through the positioning equipment, I'll, I'll stop. We'll, we'll complete this lecture on Monday. So let's, let's, let's discuss the positioning equipment. And then on Monday, remember that we also have the review. Um, but I know there's a lot of information that I don't want you guys to uh, just don't get. I know your concentration is it will be limited if I just show you slide by slide. So so let's go through this one and then we'll come back to this on, on Monday. Uh, so positioning equipment is used to handle material at a single location so that the material is in the correct position for subsequent handling, machining, transport, and storage. Uh, online transport equipment, positioning equipment is usually used to handle uh, at a single workplace. So here we're not necessarily looking at moving stuff around. We want to make sure that the, the material is located and is well positioned. Uh, material can be also positioned uh, manually without no equipment. Um, as compared to manual handling, the use of positioning equipment can provide the following benefits. Raise the productivity of each worker when the frequency of handling is high. Improve product quality and limit damage to materials and equipment when the item handle is heavy or hard to hold. Remember, this will be basically positioning the material in a way that you can continue doing uh, the operation if you need to, or if you have to provide some additional um, parts on top of the, of the equipment. So reduce fatigue injuries when the environment is hazardous or inaccessible. So positioning equipment, here's some, some examples. Um, lift, turntable, dock lever, ball transfer table, rotary in this table, parts feeder, aerofilm device, poise balancer manipulator, and industrial robot. So these are, um, we have one of these uh, manufacturing uh, professor. Um, he has a robot, uh, and also the 30 minutes in the industrial engineering department has one of those. Um, so positioning equipment, you have these till turn tables. So depending on, on what type of operation you need to do, if you have to lift the materials, you have to move them down. If you have to pull them, push them, you have a lot of flexibility uh, there. Uh, the dock leverer, so if you, for example, are, are bringing this from a warehouse facility to the truck, you have this ramp that is going to allow you to make sure that the, uh, the weight is distributed in the right direction. 
Um, and then this rotary index table is basically making sure that if you have this automated process here, the parts are well positioned so the robots or the other machines can perform the operations appropriately. Um, so here we have the rigid link manipulator. So again, if you have to fix, let's say you have something hanging from here, you have to fix that position. You can do that with this equipment. Parts feeder, here you, you have this uh, machine that is going to uh, put some of the materials that you need for the processing in the, in the right position. Like if you have a robot picking some of these parts, it's, it's fixed, the location is fixed and it's your, the robot will go to the exact location to retrieve the part. Um, and the films, uh, air film device, uh, here we have uh, air pallet. So they will, will help you lift um, the, you have the control here, the operator has the control and it, it will allow you to lift some of the parts on, on the right location. Uh, other types, these are jeep crane manipulator, um, vacuum manipulator, same idea. So if, you, if you, you're, you're using the air to help you position some of the materials and the industrial robot. Uh, so it's, it's, you code the movement of these robots and, and you validate, verify that the, the coordinates are right. And then once you have programmed this robot, it will move to the right coordinates and will perform the, the, the operation that is required on that position. Uh, the robot is pretty pretty nice because it has a lot of flexibility in terms of movement. So you can see those arrows here. So you can move around uh, the edge. Here you can have this movement for this area. And also here at the, at the end of the arm, you also have some flexibility in terms of movement. So you have a, a, a chances of putting, uh, moving this arm in the right locations are very high. Um, Unit low formation equipment is used to restrict materials so that they maintain their integrity when handled at a single load during transport and for storage. Advantages, more items can be handled at a time, enables the use of standard material handling equipment. Um, I'm sorry, this is uh, for unit low formation. I, I asked you, I, I told you that I was going to stop after positioning equipment. So let's stop here. We'll continue on, on Monday with the unit low formation equipment and we'll complete this lecture and then we'll do the, the review uh, on Monday. Any, any questions, comments? Good, so I'll see you on Monday. I'll have office hours today from 3.30 to 4.30 via Zoom. So if you need to talk to me in private, you can, you can log in into Zoom and we'll talk. Yes, yes. So the material we cover, yes. Yes, this lecture, this will be the last lecture for the exam, yes. No, it's just what we cover after the first exam. Okay, so stop the video. I'll talk to you guys again on Monday. See you too.